Assalamu alaikum to you all. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we are going to look at binary search trees. Obviously, most of the lecture is going to be like revision to you because we have done a lot about binary search tree uh, in the data structures course. Nonetheless, since it is part of our syllabus for this course, we shall uh, repeat it once more. Um, so in this uh, particular lecture, these are the outlines. First we remind ourselves what is binary search tree, what are the different types of ways that you can traverse binary search tree. Sometimes this is also called tree walk. How do you walk through the tree? Uh, then we look at the querying methods or algorithms that allow you to query binary search tree. For example, to find an element, to find the maximum, minimum, and so on. Yeah, as listed here. Searching, finding minimum and maximum. Uh, finding the successor of a node or predecessor of a node. These are all examples of uh, querying uh, operations. And then finally we look at the modifying operations of insertion and deletion. Okay, but first of all let's remind ourselves what is binary search tree. Um, before we look at the definition proper, uh, it is important to note that uh, uh, BST actually supports most of the dynamic set operations that we mentioned in the previous uh, lecture, uh, including the following, search, minimum, maximum, predecessor, successor, insert, and delete. And all these operations can be done in big O of H time, where H is the height of the tree. So it means actually the running time depends on how balanced your tree is. Uh, if your tree is balanced, then of course we know the height is going to be log n. So you are running time for all the search methods will be a big O of log n or theta of log n actually. Um, however, if you are unlucky that the tree is not balanced, then H will be theta of n. Uh, we studied AVL tree. Uh, in the data structure course another which is of course always balance so there is a guarantee of balance in the case of a VL tree another uh, tree that is balanced but <coughs> which unfortunately we didn't study but actually is very similar to a VL is called red black tree so for these type of trees we can guarantee to have a bigger of log n for most of the operations of the tree, particularly the search operations. Okay, so what actually is a binary search tree? Uh, okay, before actually the definition, let us look at how we represent it. Or well, let's remind ourselves about how we represent binary search tree. Uh, it is a binary tree that has an attribute root so root will be pointing to the root node of the tree uh, moreover each node in the tree contains the following fields there is a key uh, which as we remember from data structure the key must be comparable so that you will be, you'll be able to know uh, whether this key is less than that or that is greater than this and so on. We need to be able to compare the keys within the uh, BST. Okay, in addition to key, we of course have two references, left and right, 
pointing to the left subtree and the right subtree, both of which must be binary search trees themselves. Now, this is additional uh, uh, variable uh, in this representation. We didn't have this in the data structure course. Each node will also have a reference to its parent. So there is a reference P pointing back to the parent. Uh, finally, we may have additional variable for what is called satellite data. So apart from the key, you may have more data stored in the node. Actually, in an uh, object-oriented uh, course like Java, this is normally uh, grouped together as one object. Uh, but other languages may break them into two. We have key and data separately. So this is a representation. Now, let's look at the ordering property that a binary search tree must satisfy. This is actually what distinguishes it from a normal binary tree. So a binary search tree is a binary tree that satisfies the following ordering property. If you take any node X in the binary search tree, then for any other uh, node Y or for all Y, for all nodes y in the left subtree of x, y dot key must be less than or equal to x dot key. Similarly, for any node y in the right subtree of x, uh, y dot key must be greater or equal to x dot key. Uh, notice that here we didn't mention anything specific about x. So it doesn't have to be the root. Any node you take, any node. So if, for example, if this is your x, then for all the nodes to the left of x, the keys must be less than the key in x. And for all the nodes y uh, in the right subtree of x, the keys must be greater than uh, the key inside the node number x. If we have this for all the nodes uh, in the BS in the tree, then the tree is said to be a binary search tree. Right. So, having uh, taken care of the definition, let us now start to look at the operations, starting with the traversals. Uh, there are a number of different types of traversals. Here, we shall concentrate on the depth first type of traversals the first of which is in order uh, traversal or what is called in order tree walk uh, this is uh, the one that will allow you actually to uh, visit through the elements of a BST in an increasing order yeah uh, it is called in order because when we reach a node, we will visit the key of that node in between processing the left subtree and processing the right subtree. This is why it is named as so. Okay, it prints the keys in the root between the values in the left and those in the right. Uh, now we also have the pre-order tree work, which will print, according to the name here, it will print the root before printing the values in the subtrees, uh, left subtree and then right subtree. And the last one is the post-order tree work, which will print the root after processing both the left and the right. So let's take an example. Suppose we have this simple uh, BST. How can we print the elements uh, or the keys in the nodes using the in order tree work? So the idea basically is when we come to the root here, we don't print it yet. We go and process the left subtree first. 
similarly when we come to the left subtree we don't uh, visit the key yet we go to its left and therefore now when we come to 2 uh, uh, this node number containing 2 it doesn't have left and doesn't have right so we can visit it immediately okay so if you are doing in order 2 will be the first element to print and by that we have done the left subtree of this node rooted at 3 so we can now do the key tree and then having done the key now we can do the right subtree so in short this is what you're gonna have as the in order traversal of this tree so having done with uh, this subtree uh, with the values 2 3 4 we can now do the key of the main uh, root Okay, and then we now look at the right subtree. So here too, when we come, there is no left subtree. So we can straight away print the 7 and then finally the 9. The other operations are similar. I don't think I have to repeat them. We all know how to do the different traversals. Pre-order means you have to do the key always first. So 5 is the first to print before processing the left and then the right. And similarly the post order we have to finish with both the left and the right before we do the key 5 okay uh, so now can we come up with an algorithm that will do the in order tree work uh, it's very easy actually as we already know from the data structure course uh, we just treat the tree as if it is uh, recursive so a tree if you remember the recursive definition of binary tree it has one key and two subtrees therefore if you want to do in order traversal of this tree we will call our uh, in order traversal recursively on the left then we visit the key and then we visit we recursively call the right subtree. So basically three things to do. To process the left, we do a recursive call on the left. Then print the key, and then the last thing, process the right. Now of course if you are doing recursion, there must be a base case. The base case in this case is when we reach a null. If we reach an empty tree, there is nothing to do. So that's why if you look at this routine, it is saying if x is null, x is not null. If it is not null, then we go ahead and do the three things. If it is null, there is nothing to do. And of course, the three things are do a recursive call on x that left, then print the key, and then do a recursive call on x that right. Uh, so again, we can take another example. Uh, with this uh, bigger tree but the idea is the same uh, right now can you guess the running time uh, obviously as we mentioned earlier it depends on the height of the no actually it doesn't depend on the height in this case because we must visit each node anyway so if there are n nodes each of them has to be visited Therefore, the running time will be theta of n. It is in the search tree, uh, search uh, algorithms that we, we will be talking about height. But for the in, for the uh, traversal, we have to visit each key. So the running time is theta of n. Okay. Now some basic facts about uh, binary search tree. Uh, some of them we know, some of them we probably don't. Uh, one is that it is possible to construct a unique binary search tree if we are given only the pre-order traversal of the tree. So if you are told how the elements are going to be uh, visited using the pre-order traversal, then from that alone you can reconstruct the tree. And the same thing 
for the post order uh, however if you are given only the in order traversal unfortunately we cannot reconstruct the tree so this is true only for pre-order and post order and i can give you an idea how this is done if we go back to our tree here for example suppose we are given this pre-order traversal now what we know from pre-order traversal is that the route is visited first so clearly we can say that this is going to be the root of our tree 56 and then we know that the left subtree will be visited next and all elements in the left are going to be less than this uh, root key so we're going to see which elements are less than 56 all of this are less than 56 until 27 so we can clearly say this will form the left subtree and this will form the right subtree so when you come to the left subtree we repeat the same idea that the first element here must be the root of the left subtree so you can see 26 will be the root of the left subtree of 56 again we now try to find what are the keys that are less than 26 all of this are less than 26 until 24 so all of this must be to the left of 26 18 12 and 24 as you can see here and the first one among them must be the root and so on and so forth so if you follow this methodology if you are only given this list of numbers you can actually reconstruct the tree a similar idea for first order because we know that in first order the root is printed last so we go straight to the last element and know that this is going to be the root so just put it as the root and then we know that uh, the rest of the elements are printed uh, left first and then the right first so we try to look for all the elements that are less than 56 so all of this up to 26 are less so they will form the left subtree and this will form the right so again when we come to the left we will remember that the last element is the root of that left subtree 26 okay and similarly for the other group the last element 200 is the root of that subtree so if you continue doing this recursively eventually you will be able to generate the tree yeah so this is what we mean by it is possible to regenerate the tree if you are giving pre-order or post-order traversal but you cannot do so with in-order traversal okay another uh, fact we should know is that this facts that we mentioned are only related to binary search tree if your tree is an ordinary binary tree then even the post order and pre order uh, traversal cannot help you regenerate the tree uh, because there are many possibilities that you, you're gonna get yeah, so this is only for binary search trees okay um, now what is the correctness of our algorithm that we saw earlier about in order tree work uh, this can be proven very easily by induction okay so what we want to prove is that all the elements are printed in order and that the algorithm will terminate okay now uh, in uh, proof by induction normally you must have the base case and then the uh, you make a hypothesis that the result is true for a certain number of elements less than the the original uh, uh, set and then try to prove that with that assumption the whole uh, tree can also be I mean can be proven to be correct 
so let us try this uh, obviously uh, if the tree is of size if, if the tree is empty there is nothing to do uh, there is no element to print so the automatically the any the elements are gonna be printed in order because there are no elements anyway so that is the best case now for the recursive case we need to assume that the the elements in the left subtree are going to be printed in order and the elements in the right subtree are also going to be printed in order now if that is the case looking at the algorithm it is printing the uh, the left subtree before the root okay and therefore at the point of printing the root we will have printed all the elements less than the root so the list of the elements are still in order S similarly after printing the root we're gonna go and print the right subtree in order but all the elements according to the definition of BST all the elements in the right subtree are greater than the root and therefore all the elements will be printed in order so it's more or less trivial to prove that the algorithm will print all the elements in order uh, based on the definition of BST and based on the way that algorithm was stated because the algorithm says process the left then print the root and then process the right now we assume that the left and right are going to be processed you know, are going to be printed in order so all the left elements are printed in order and then we print the root we know that the root is greater than all the left elements and we also know that the root is less than all the elements in the right subtree so basically the algorithm will definitely print the elements uh, in order okay that is about uh, tree walk or traversal now let's just look at the searching operations <coughs> starting with the search the main search uh, algorithm so here the idea is given a certain key k we want to return a pointer to the node containing the k if it exists otherwise we want to return nil uh, so the we all know what to do basically we're gonna start from the root and keep comparing our target against the key inside the root and then decide whether we're gonna go to the left or to the right until we either find the target or until we reach an empty node uh, if we reach empty it means the element is not uh, there okay uh, so as we are searching if we find that our target is equal to the root then we have found the key on the other hand if uh, our target is less than uh, x dot key where x is the current node then we're gonna search to the left of x and similarly if k is greater than x dot key then we're gonna search to the right of x uh, for example if you try to find key 13 in this tree we're gonna start by comparing 13 and 15 and we see that the target 13 is less than 15 so we're gonna go to the left however if you compare 13 and 6 13 is greater so we're gonna go to the right Similarly, 13 is greater than 7, so we're going to go to the right. But now, if we compare, they are equal. So, we have found the 13, and we turn it. Right. So, this is a uh, simple uh, search in using uh, binary search tree, which is actually one of the main purpose of binary search tree, to make searching faster. As you can see, we 
we will do at most h number of comparisons where h is the height of the tree in this for in this example the height is one two three four five so at most you're gonna do five comparison before you can find any key in this tree uh, in this case we were able to do it with just four comparison compare with 15 with 6 with 7 with 13 and that's why the searching is very very fast uh, in BSD especially if you are lucky to have the tree to be balanced if it is balanced the height is log n uh, so you only need to do log n number of comparison and that will give you the the speed of the algorithm in terms of running time okay so what is the algorithm for this uh, exactly as we said doing it recursively first we check if x is nil or uh, x dot key equal to our target then we're gonna return the x okay uh, in the first case it means the the key is uh, not found because we have reached an empty node it means our key doesn't exist in the tree so just return nil in that case on the other hand if x dot key is equal to our target we're gonna return the x yeah. um, now on the other hand if uh, your target k is less than x dot key you just do a recursive search on x dot left so return the result of three dot search x dot left searching for the same target else uh, it means the the target k is greater than x dot key so you do the search on their x dot right on the right sub tree so this is the search algorithm as i'm sure we all know it and this is what i mentioned earlier that the running time of this algorithm is big o of h where h is the height of the tree okay uh, now you can do actually an iterative version of the search algorithm uh, relatively uh, of the same uh, size in terms of the length of the code uh, without losing much actually in terms of clarity as well and since as we know iterative method are usually faster on most computers probably the iterative version is better to adopt in this case <coughs> this is the iterative version uh, you start uh, a, a loop as long as x which is the initial uh, uh, reference to zero to the tree as long as x is not nil and x dot key is not equal to your target then you check if your target is less than x dot key then you're gonna update x with x dot left otherwise you update x with x dot right and repeat the process so you're gonna repeat the search with either the left subtree or the right subtree and so on so eventually you're gonna reach either x equal to nil in which case your target k is not found or you will actually reach x dot key um, so the same idea uh, you can go through this tree to see how it will work this is gonna work like the same the same way as the recursive one because each time we are choosing one of the two subtrees as I will go to the left or, or go to the right until we find our target uh, and as I mentioned the iterative search tree is usually more efficient than uh, than the recursive one although the recursive one may look more easy in terms of uh, simplicity of the code <coughs> okay the next search methods are minimum 
and maximum finding the minimum and the maximum obviously in a BST the minimum element is on the right most on the left most node so you're gonna keep going to the left the left most node will contain the minimum key and similarly the right uh, the maximum is gonna be in the right most node of the tree so these are the algorithms for that uh, iterative versions of the algorithms you come in with the X usually the root of the tree and you start a loop as long as X dot left is not nil update X to X dot left so you keep repeating until you find X dot left is nil if X dot left is nil then X is your minimum so return it and similarly for the uh, for the maximum you keep going to the right until you find the node uh, this tree shows an example uh, if you are looking for the minimum you start with the root and you keep going to the left to the left to the left until you find a node whose left is null then that node is your minimum and similarly for the maximum Now there's a question here, how long do you think the algorithm will take? I'm sure you can see it's going to take the height of the tree. So depending on how balanced the tree is, it could be anything between n, uh, which will be the case if the tree is uh, just like linked list, or log n. Okay. The next uh, set of algorithms are interesting actually because I don't think we consider them in the data structure course. Finding the successor and the predecessor. So let's define what is a successor. Uh, the successor to a node X is a node Y such that the key in the node Y is the smallest key that is greater than x dot key yeah so the small so the the successor is the one that is immediately greater than the x or the x dot key uh, so uh, basically there are uh, two cases for finding the the successor uh, one way we already know from uh, data structure because we needed to find it in order to do deletion okay but this way only happens if the tree uh, has a right child Let's say case one if x dot right is non empty okay we are trying to find the successor for a node x and that x has a right subtree the right subtree is not null it's not empty it means the successor actually is going to be in the right subtree and in fact it's going to be the minimum element in the right subtree so this is case number one if the right subtree is not empty then the successor of x is the minimum element from the right subtree of x but what happens if uh, the right subtree is empty? Where is going to be the successor? This is the one we have not actually considered in the data structure code because we don't need it in that case. Our concentration that time was for the deletion in a case where the node has two children. So we have to find the successor. Well, if a node has two children, definitely is its right is not empty. So this was what we always did: find the minimum from the right. But here we are just trying to find the successor for finding the successor case, not for deletion. And even a node that has empty right subtree can have a successor. But in that case, the successor is not going to be on the right. 
So how do we get it? This is how do we get, how we get it. Say so go up the tree until the current node is a child is a child is a left child until the current node is a left child of its parent. Okay, then the parent is the successor. The parent is the successor. Uh, this is based on uh, understood it an example. Uh, so let's take an example. Of course, going up sometime may not be possible because you may reach uh, the end of the tree. You may reach the root node. If you reach the root node without finding a node uh, that satisfies this condition, it means your node has no successor, as we will see in a moment with that example. So suppose we have this tree. Okay, uh, let's take some example. Uh, for example, what is the successor of 15? Successor of 15 is obvious because 15 has a right subtree. So all you have to do is go to the right and find the smallest element. To find the smallest element on the right, you're going to keep going to the left. The leftmost is the smallest. And therefore, the successor of 15 is 17. Okay. Let's take another example. What is the successor of 13? Now, as you can see here, 13 has no right uh, subtree. But still it has a successor. So what you do according to this uh, statement is say, keep going up the tree uh, until you find a current node that is a left, sub that is a left subtree of its parent. Then the successor of your node X is the parent of that current node. So let's see what that means. Uh, obviously 13 is not a left child of 7. Okay, so let's go up again. Is 7 a left child of 6? No, it is a right child. Okay, is 6 a left child of 15? obviously yes so if that is the case then this 15 is the successor of our node 13 I repeat to find the successor of a node that doesn't have a right child you will go up the tree one by one until you find a node of course starting from the node that you are trying to find a successor so starting from 13 in this case you keep going up the tree until you find a node that is a left child of its parent. Now 13 is a right child of 7. Okay. Similarly, 7 is a right child of 6. But 6 is a left child of 15. Therefore, this parent of 6 is the successor to our node 13. Okay, that's what it means. Uh, so the uh, successor of 13 is 15. As you can see numerically, after 13, the next bigger value is 15, and then 17, then 18, then 19, and so, uh, then 20. Okay. Finally, uh, what is the successor of 9? Again, you can see 9 is a leaf node, so its right subtree is empty. So we cannot find the successor in the uh, left subtree. So we have to go up the tree, on starting from the node 9, until we find a parent uh, that is that this node, the current node, is a left child of that parent. So then that parent is the successor. So let's go. Is that is 9 a left child of 13? The answer is of course yes. 9 is a left child of 13. Therefore in this case 13 
is the successor of 9. Yeah. So this is basically how to find the successor of a node. Uh, there are two cases. The first case is trivial or is easy. If the node has a right child, then the successor must be in that right child and it is the smallest element in the, in the right uh, subtree. Uh, otherwise, we're going to go up the tree until we find a parent node that the current node is a left child of it. Then that parent is the successor of our current of our node X. Uh, now there is a case where <coughs> we will not be able to find a successor. For example, twenty has an empty right subtree. So we have to keep going up uh, until we find a node. Uh, that the current node is a left child of now is 18 or rather is 20 left child of 18 no so we go up again is 18 a left child of 15 no but here we are stuck we cannot go any further because 15 is the root so if this is the case then it is a confirmation that actually this node has no successor it is the largest element this is what this last statement here is saying if you cannot go further and you reach the root then x is the largest element and therefore has no successor uh, now this is the algorithm for finding the successor uh, the first case is checking for the normal case where the x dot right is not nil if it is not nil, all you have to do is find the minimum from x dot right. Otherwise, you need to define a variable y, initialize it with the parent of your x, the immediate parent of x. And then you keep checking. As long as y is not nil and uh, x is not equal to y dot right in other words uh, x is not a right child of y then you keep updating your y rather your x to be y so we're going to move x up okay at the and also update the the y to be the parent of y you're going to move the y up so we are going up the tree, updating the current node x, until this is not the case. So if this not the case means x is in fact a right child of y. So when we have that, then we stop and return the y as our successor. Yeah, this is exactly what we've been doing in the example. So that is how to find the successor, and this is the algorithm for doing that. Uh, you can easily transform this to find the predecessor. Uh, I will give the definition for predecessor. It's very symmetric to the definition of uh, successor in, in the next slide. Uh, obviously, since we are going up the tree to find the successor, or down the tree in, the, in case the right is not uh, empty. The maximum comparison we're going to do is height of the tree. So we can say the running time of finding the successor is also big O of H. Okay, what about the predecessor? Um, now the predecessor is similar. Uh, by definition, the predecessor of a node X is another node y such that y dot key is the biggest key that is less than x dot key the biggest element that is less than the x dot key okay how do we find it again there are two cases uh, it's the opposite of successor you know in successor we look for it usually from the right uh, now for predecessor we look for it from the left 
so like we saw with the successor there are two cases if x dot left is not empty then definitely the predecessor is inside x dot left and it's going to be the maximum element from x dot left however if x dot left is empty then we're going to go up the tree until the current node is a right child this time not left child but right child uh, of the parent of its parent and in that case the parent is the predecessor uh, again if you cannot go up any further it means your x actually has no predecessor it is the smallest element in the tree so we take another example like we did with the successor uh, it's the same tree that we discussed earlier but now looking for predecessors what is the predecessor of 15 well 15 has a left child so it's gonna be the biggest element in this left child how do we find the biggest element we keep going to the right the right most which is 13 in this case is the predecessor so immediately after 13 we will have 15 so 13 is the predecessor of 15 what about 9 9 has no left subtree so its predecessor cannot be here so what do we do we keep going up until we find the current node has a parent where that current node is actually uh, a right a right subtree okay <clears throat> we go up the tree until the current node is a right child of its parent now here um, the 13 is it a right child uh, of 7 obviously it is 13 is a right child of 7 therefore the parent of 13 which is the 7 itself is the predecessor of 9 yeah so again I repeat to find the predecessor of a node that has no left we go up the tree until the current node is a right child of its parent so 9 is not a right child of 13 but 13 is a right child of 7 so 7 is our predecessor let's take one more example what is the predecessor of 7 ok so 7 has no left child so again we have to go up so we're gonna ask is 6 a right child of 7 yes it is therefore 6 is our predecessor yeah so this is how to find the predecessor of a node okay the next operation is that of insertion um, but probably the lecture is uh, getting too long for a video uh, recording so we're gonna pause here and break the lecture into two and we're gonna do the two operation of uh, insertion and deletion in another lecture.